All right, so welcome to the August 5th, 2021 TSC meeting. Uh, looks like most of the folks here are people who've been here before, so you know all about our antitrust policy. Uh, that is one thing that we have to take into account during these meetings. And then the second thing that we have to take into account is the code of conduct, which is linked in the agenda. Uh, of course, all are welcome to join the meeting. Uh, the first announcement is an announcement that you've seen many times over, um, but if you do have anything for the developer newsletter, it goes out on Friday, so uh, feel free to, to add anything that you think is relevant for your project, your lab, your uh, working group, your SIG, anything that might be of interest to the, the Hyperledger developers and community. So um, any other announcements that people have? And I, I will point out that Tracy originated the use the raise your hand button thing. So if you want to say something, please uh, use the raise your hand feature. All right, thanks, Ray. Uh, I guess there is no other announcements. So we'll move on to just the quarterly reports. I see Sarah is here from Iroha, I know that uh, not everybody has had a chance to look at this yet, um, but there was one thing that Sarah brought up um, or the Iroha community brought up around uh, the, the, I assume CRS is the common repository structure. Is that correct, Sarah? Hi, uh, yes. So uh, we got a little bit confused. Uh, we got uh, we got everything about the uh, renaming master to main. We're almost done with this, apparently. Uh, we just need to ask to remain the last two um, repos. We don't have access to them. We don't have permissions. Uh, but with a common repository structure, I remember that someone from the Hyperledger team uh, pushed something, some sort of a tool about this some time ago. What was that tool? And if that wasn't this exact thing, because I think it was that repo liner thingy. I don't remember the name correctly, unfortunately. I'm sorry. Um, but if it wasn't this, uh, does it mean that we we can just manually uh, get and add those additional files in there. Uh, how does that work? Because it's a little bit confusing for me as a probably not that um, technical person and the team was not uh, able to help me with this uh, and with this tool. So if uh, there is a way to explain to me in a very simple terms, um, what should we do and how it is connected to that repo uh, tool, Mm -hmm. That would be awesome because I got a little bit confused with this and I'm sorry. No, no problem. Um, so what, what we had discovered is that the repo lint tool didn't work for everybody. Um, and so what we ended up doing was creating this uh, common repository structure. Uh, I think it's, if you click on that, it actually takes you to the link. Um, I think it's in the, the TSC GitHub repo, um, which is just guidelines for, oh, actually it's on the wiki. Uh, maybe we need to change where that link goes to uh, because we've created the the new um, the new guidelines on the TSC GitHub repository that basically tells you what the files are that are required to exist uh, in the in the uh, in the repositories. So the license, the code of conduct, and the security have certain required content that has to be in there. And then there's uh, some other files that are required that are listed below, and then some optional files that are, are kind of recommended or should. Um, so if you go through this link, um, Sarah, it, it should tell you all of the sorts of files that you would need to have in your repository to be considered uh, compliant with the common repository structure. So we're no longer using the, the tool. Okay, awesome, because that one was confusing. Can you please send me the link to the chatters? Oh, okay, see. Okay, great, awesome. Thank you so much. I'll look into it. And uh, yeah, doing this manually might be the easiest way of doing it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And then secondly, uh, Rise, the, uh, the repositories that they don't have permissions to, is that something that you can help? I'm, uh, I'm doing it right now. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions then for, for Sarah, for the folks who've had a chance to, to read this, any comments that people might have? Um, if not, we can, you know, if people still haven't had a chance, we can leave this on next week as well uh, for any additional comments. 
Sure, I'll uh, join next week too if there are any questions or if there are any questions, we can also like answer them in comments or anything. I'm okay with any any option here. Yeah, so yeah. All right, perfect. I'll be here anyway. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for joining. Um, all right, so we also have in the uh, list of project reports that are due a report from Indy and Aries. Um, Sarah, I think you were actually a week ahead of time, which is great and we appreciate that. Um, but if anybody has any contacts with the Indy or Aries team, uh, let them know that their report is due so that we can take a look at those next week. I think there's also another one that's upcoming uh, for next week as well. So take a look at the project update calendar and see if there's anything there that uh, you might be able to help with. All right, any questions on quarterly reports before we move to the discussion section? It's a quiet morning this morning. No questions? Okay, well, hopefully we'll have some uh, good discussion in the discussion section. Uh, so the first thing is the incubation entry considerations. Um, so I had a, a go at, uh, well, I had a, a listen to last week's TSC call and it sounded like what we wanted to do was kind of break up the, the discussion that we had into the considerations and the best practices. So I took a, a stab at kind of putting that together at the top of the document, um, kind of taking what we already had and, and separating out into kind of considerations and best practices. I thought this would be a way that we could see, see if we could finalize this incubation entry considerations. And uh, so if there's any sort of comments or things that uh, we're missing from this, this is probably the time to, to bring it up. Hurt. Hey, Tracy. Yeah, thanks a lot for putting this together. This is really nice. Um, I think in the comments on the previous version, I had asked about having a section on community. Um, what do you think about that? Uh, I do remember those conversations, Hart. Uh, did we have anything specific in the community section that we wanted to add? Uh, well, I guess what I posited last time, um, but we want people to be able to gauge whether their project is likely to be accepted. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I've observed is that the TSC is more likely to accept a project that has maintainers or contributors with a lot of experience in the open source community, and particularly those with Hyperledger experience, uh, than a project whose contributors are totally new to open source. Um, and I thought maybe we would want to sort of put this somewhere uh, in this document just to to let people know that the TSC generally looks more favorably on projects with people with open source experience. And if not, you may want to talk to someone with more open source experience. Just something along those lines. Um, whether you know this document is totally binding or not, uh, you know. That, that sort of matters less to me um, compared to, you know, can people read this document and figure out if their project is going to be, is likely to be accepted or not? Okay. Um, I think it's a good idea, uh, Hart. I am in the process of typing something in so that we can take a look at and see if that is what you, uh, I think is appropriate. So the TSC is more likely to accept 
projects that have contributors familiar with open source practices. Um, that's what I've typed in. Uh, you mentioned, and even more so people who maybe have Hyperledger experience. Is that something that we want to add to this? Uh, my concern with that heart is that uh, it may seem a bit insular. And so I'm a bit hesitant to add that clause to this, but uh, happy to to hear thoughts on that. So my thought on that was that it does, I, I agree that it does appear to be insular, uh, but that has been the reality of the voting process. Okay, Dano, did you? So I was about to say the insular concern was my big concern with that, even though that may be reality. If we put it in words and put it out there, it's almost like putting up a big sign, no new people encouraged. and. You know, we could need to find a way to phrase it to encourage people to recognize that's what goes on at the same time, still encourage them to join. So maybe if we put in some points about how Hyperledger Labs um, is a great place to grow that experience, rather than saying, if you're not in the club, don't try. Because I mean, it's it's no matter how we phrase it, that's how some people are going to view it if we put any soft phrasing on that. So that's that's one risk with acknowledging that reality in writing. Okay, I, I like the clause and, and Dano, I added it. Um, Rai, if you wouldn't mind reloading and just scrolling down to the community section, which I added right be right after the maintainers. Um, this is what I've added. Uh, Hyperledger Labs is a great place to grow this experience using the words that you, um, you mentioned there, Dano. Thoughts on, on the way this is reading? Hart, I know your hand is up and I think you have a comment. Sure. Yes, thank you. Um, so I like this. Can we also encourage people to to reach out? So so what I, I agree with, the, we don't want to appear as insular. Um, what I was hoping is we could say that, you know, look, if you haven't been involved with Hyperledger, you know, please try to reach out with, with people that are involved. Um, so I don't know if we could add something like that and say that, you know, hey, if you're not as familiar, you know, please, uh, please reach out to people. I don't know how we want to phrase that, um, but I think something like that is good. Um, you know, if you look at the Apache process, they have the whole champion role that is designed to help people um, that aren't as familiar, you know, get involved. And I don't know that we need to formalize that, but maybe we could uh encourage people to reach out yeah i know in the best practices section the first bullet is a bit about that reach out i don't know if that covers um specifically what you're looking for heart or if we need to be stronger in the wording there right if you wouldn't mind scrolling down to the best practices thank you Uh, before you respond, as you're reading that heart, Dano, you have a comment? Yeah, I wonder if we should, rather than saying Hyperledger Labs is a great place to start, if we add another thing, you know, joining existing projects, not joining, but joining participation in existing projects or starting new projects in Hyperledger Labs is a great way to develop this. So, you know, make it accessible to the existing projects as well. Participating in existing. Okay, I have added that Dano as a as a comment. Heart. Oh, I'm sorry. I think Grace is next. <laughs> thanks. Um, first of all, thanks, Gracie. This looks really great, and I really like those best practices down there. Um, so going back to the. Um, uh, section above, right? You guys growing up? Just, <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I think that when we're talking about the, you know, I, I would almost want to say around the community, it's a, a nice to have, like, or or having prior experience. It is not a requirement or or, or something like that. Just because 
as you said, insular, but it is a nice to have. And it's saying, or maybe saying with open source practices, regardless of Hyperledger, I don't, I don't know exactly what I'm trying to get to, but just trying to open that a little bit more because that's, uh, cause yeah, it, it is true, Hart's correct, that that is how the voting practices typically go, but it's, I don't know, there are ways to just go around it. I wanna just make sure we're emphasizing it. Yeah, uh, Grace, I I think that's an interesting point. I know in a lot of the other, um, in the other sections, I tried to use the word should versus must, right? Um, yeah. Because I don't think these are 100% binding, as you mentioned, right? Um, and, you know, these are, these are considered things that we consider and then they wouldn't necessarily uh, stop us from accepting a project, but they, they definitely are things that people should think about as they, as they think about bringing in a proposal. These are the sorts of things that we've had, obviously, back and forth discussions on whenever we see project proposals. So um, happy to make that a little less strong, if you will, um, and happy to take suggestions on how to do that. Hart. Yeah, I think Grace's suggestion sounds great. Um, you know, we do want to emphasize that, you know, this is what has historically happened, but, you know, it shouldn't stop people. We don't want to, uh, we don't want to raise a bar in people's minds about proposing projects. Do we think in the uh, overall considerations, kind of where we're introducing the considerations, that where we're, that's where we should be uh, saying, you know, these are not, you know, hard and fast rules. Um, these are things that that are uh, are things that people consider as we look at proposals, but but wouldn't necessarily stop projects from from being accepted. Yes, so I think that's exactly what I had in mind when 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 we started this document. Um, you know, it's not a it's not a rubric. It's sort of a, a guide, and you know, if you sort of the the idea is that if you meet all of the considerations, then you're probably very likely to be accepted. Uh, if you meet few of the considerations. Um, you're not very likely to be accepted. And if you're somewhere in the middle, well, you know, it's it's hard to say, right? Um, but I think that's a great idea to add the point that these are not all necessarily hard and fast things. They're just guidelines that should allow people to gauge whether their project is likely to be accepted or not. And I think you worded that better than I did, uh, but I, I agree with your intent. All right. Um, so when it brings up the reload, see if I captured um, this correctly. Bobby. Hi, I would just like to see a comment, maybe directing people to the learning materials working group if you're new to Hyperledger, because every two weeks at our call, we teach people about the community. Okay, I think that's a good best practice to add, Bobby. All right. Um, And Bobby, is the learnings material, sorry, uh, I know I got it wrong. Is the, how, how do we say this? The learning, learning materials development, development working group. Is, is it, uh, does it meet every other week and that's uh, what you go through or does it? Yes, yes. We start with uh, introducing people to the community, the working groups, the projects, how to get information on all that stuff. Um, and we go from there, depending on who's on the call. Okay. Sorry, I'm typing and not looking at whose hands are up at the moment. Um, and the wiki does support, you know, multiple people editing. So if someone, you know, also want to edit. <laughs> uh, 
Um, no hands up. Uh, any, did anybody have a thought on the introduction to the considerations about the hard and fast rules? Okay, everybody loved what I wrote. Um, Bobby, I don't know if this captures that third bullet point under best practices captures what you uh, had intended. Uh, if not, feel free to wordsmith that as you will. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. All right, other thoughts on, on what we have here? Are we feeling pretty good about this at the moment? Um, Arun asked in chat, uh, should we ask people to reach out on the TSC mailing list and the community architects mailing list? Um, I think either is, or I think both is fine, or the TSC list is fine. Uh, are we, okay. So I specifically removed TSC, Arun, uh, from the first bullet point and said existing chat channels, mailing list or direct communication with members of the community. Uh, this may be my, uh, my desire to have people reach out to more than just the TSC. So if their, if their project might overlap with an existing project or their project might, uh, you know, add to something that already exists out there. I think the, the first place I'd love them to start, right, is with that project or with that lab um, and not directly with the TSC. And so I think that's why I uh, was a bit uh, suspect there in, in removing that from the which mailing list or which chat channel, uh, Arun. Yeah, that, that, thanks for bringing up that good point. I guess I agree what you're trying to, I mean, what you're intending to say over there. However, I want some place where it is must in addition to these optional places. So by making it too wide or too, um, too wide scoped with this, we never know where a particular discussion happens. So it is fine to discuss outside, but it's some, like we should, somebody should know where to look look for some new proposals coming up instead of so, monitoring all these channels. Okay, uh, are we talking about so in the proposal process? We do have the. I think we have a call out to to send to the TSC mailing list. So are we talking about when the proposal is being formalized or prior to it being formalized? Arun. When it is being formalized. When it's being formalized. So I think that's already in the process. And I tried not to duplicate what was already documented in the process in this document. Um, at the top, I do link to the, the proposal process. So. Um, hopefully that would uh, tell people that they need to do that. If that's not in our proposal process, then I agree, Arun, we, we probably do need to fix that. Um, so it's the, I'll just read out what is written on the HIP process. And, and over there, it's written as the seed of new project has to be vetted in a public forum like TSC mailing list. It, does not mandate TSC mailing list. It says like the TSC mailing list. Okay, so we probably should then get the proposal process updated to reflect that when you are ready to formalize the proposal uh, to send it to the TSC mailing list. Because I agree, right? That's the the right place to to formalize the request. And I know, well, <laughs> I think that's, now that I've said that, I'm thinking about the fact that before we used to do everything via Google Docs, we did proposals via Google Docs and with Firefly, we just started using the GitHub repo, which obviously all of us should be following um, the Hyperledger HIPS repo to see pull requests that are coming in. Um, 
So I think obviously the TSC mailing list is a good place to point out that you have a pull request, but uh, I, I do think that the HIPS, Hyperledger HIPS uh, repo is the, the formal place for these now. But we should definitely update the process because I don't think we've updated the process to reflect that. Okay, we will take that as an action item. Um, I'll put together something for that. Let me take a note that I just volunteered to do something. Uh, all right, any other comments on this document then? All right, so if there's no further comments, I think we can then uh, move on to our next agenda topic. All right, so our next agenda topic is uh, kind of in preparation for the, T the next TSC election. Um, so I had captured here in the agenda, all of our past decisions I know Rai has a proposal that he would like to share with us. So I'm going to hand this, the floor over to Rai for him to, to talk about that and then we can discuss. Thank you, Tracy. Um, so this is, uh, this is a very rough uh, sketch um, of what I would propose the Hyperledger TSC transform into. Uh, and that is something closer to what LFPH does. Uh, and LFN, which is the, the, the central governing board. It's, you know, the, the, the TSC, the TAC uh, is appointed in this way where each premier member gets a seat. Uh, I would propose that each top level graduated project gets a seat. The working groups and the SIGs each get a seat. And that the, uh, how those seats are filled is delegated to the people. Or, or those groups. So those could be through sub-elections or however those groups want to report who, who sits in that chair. And then the, uh, the chair and co-chair would be elected uh, as before. Um, this, would, this would result in, uh, you know, a, it would be a sea change, but it would be somewhat back to the way it was originally. Um, the original TSC was was appointed, uh, and I'm not married to any of this. My goal is to have a, a deterministic process for getting a TSC seated with more representation uh, from the projects. This also gives an incentive for projects to to reach graduated status. And uh, I'm this. I I I put it to you. Please send arrows in my direction. All right. Thanks, Rai. Yep. Uh, thoughts, people. Uh, any ideas about what this looks like? Any reactions? Negative, positive. Arun. Hey, um, I want to first understand what this fell by wayside years ago meant, like what came to your mind, why you put it like that. And apart from that, I guess I have many other questions on this proposal, including, for example, what are we considering top level graduated projects as? Are they at the DLT level and are we not considering other projects? Because given that Hyperledger is going to change the charter definition, there will be not just the DLT projects, but other than that, we are going to consider other projects as well. Even at present, we do have other projects as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll, I'll go one by one, sorry. Okay, I, I, I'll answer your first question. Uh, the, the charter says, the charter for Hyperledger says, 
the the goal, the mission is to create an enterprise grade open source DLT and code base. Um, that never happened. Uh, that that was discarded. That idea of having one single uh, DLT uh, was discarded, uh, not on quite day two, but maybe day four or five of Hyperledger. And the charter has not been uh, updated to reflect that. And uh, that's why I say it fell by the wayside years ago, because we, we are not trying to create a single DLT. Uh, Troy? Oh, hold on, before 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 Troy, the second question was around the top level graduated projects uh, getting one seat, and that would be any graduated project, not just DLT graduated projects, but any any graduated project that we have. So right now we have six of them. Um, thanks, Rai, for bringing them up. Aries, Besu, Fabric, Indy, Iroha, and Sawtooth. Um, obviously, you know, others are welcome to go through the process of exiting incubation and getting graduated. And that would obviously add additional seats as we graduate new projects. Uh, so uh, hopefully that ruined that answers both of your questions. Um, Troy, you're next. Yeah, um, I guess a few thoughts. Uh, one concern would be, I think this could end up turning in one vote that we have now into many votes. Um, the top level graduated projects might be a simpler problem, but um, having all working groups and all SIGs all get together and decide um, seems like you're going to end up with a vote again. Um, um, and, you know, I'm not sure on the motivation for the premier uh, member uh, point. Um, that seems more like at the governing level than at a technical steering committee. So I'm not sure why that point is, is, is actually in this list right now. Thank you. Sure. Uh, so I'll answer your, your last question first. Uh, I was using LFPH and uh, other projects as a model. So that's why it's there. And if you look at our list of uh, premier members, uh, most of them already are uh, represented on the current TSC. Um, and then your, your first question was, I'm sorry. It was around the process of how do you right how to get SIGs working groups and uh, to to kind of figure out who that one person is that they're going to submit for the SIG or the working group chair right seat. <laughs> right it so I wanted to make sure that SIGs and working groups uh, continue to to have uh, I wanted to have SIGs and working groups have a more formal voice um, and this was my idea. Uh, you're saying it will turn into another election. I'm sure that it will, but that would be an election that would be for the SIGs and working groups. You know, we can point them at OPA vote and say, vote how you will. We can enable uh, voting in the groups.io. Um, I just, that's not something that I want to run. Yeah, I guess my problem, sorry, I, I wasn't sure if I should raise my hand again. Okay, it's still raised. Um, well, I guess the point here is because you're going across groups, you're just going to end up with another vote. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure. You know, I, I have I have very mixed feelings about this because um, on the technical side, I do think it's nice to um, elect, and I'm kind of leery of appointments of of you know premier members sending whoever they feel like. Um, and I think when you go across groups, like working groups and six, get one total instead of one each, I think you just got back into a vote again. So I'm, I'm not sure that, that this will accomplish the goal is what I'm saying. And I'm, I'm leery about uh, appointments. All right. Um, but while I saw a... <laughs> A hand. I don't know if that was a yeah, raised hand or. I, I, I really have the same concern. Because the TSC means the technical steering committee. It should focus more on the technology side. So I'm really concerned with uh, giving, like, sadly, giving uh, each premier member a seat because they already got a seat in the governing board, right? I would prefer if we uh, 
give more seats to those uh, projects or those uh, uh, members who contribute to the most code, that should be that would be better from a TSC side. All right, thanks. Anybody else have any thoughts? Hart. Thanks. Yeah, as far as the technical stuff do, uh, uh, as far as that goes, um, does the TSC really do a lot of technical governance? I mean, I know that was the intent in the beginning, but uh, it seems more to me like it's the the TSC has sort of become a uh, some kind of community management entity. Like, when was the last time the TSC made a technical decision? So Hart, the, the comment there is about uh, what is, is in kind of direct conflict with what Bow Wow said. Is that what I'm getting? I want to make sure I understand. Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't say it's in direct conflict. Okay. Uh, Wrong words. No, 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 no. It's, yeah, it's, it's totally fine. Um, it's just that, you know, we, we don't appear to be making a lot of technical decisions. Um, that's all. Okay. Dano? So the premier members, yeah, they, there's, I think just because they're premier members doesn't mean they're going to appoint people who don't know anything about technical stuff to the committee. I think they're aware of what the committee's purposes are and who they would appoint. So I don't, Feel the same apprehension about letting tech uh, premier members appoint one of the seats and the odds are they're going to pick a very technical person in a project they care about who's involved in the project um and maybe we could write that into the encouragement if this goes through um but i think that was the, the first thing and second i'm concerned if we use metrics like whoever's committed the most lines if we make it an external metric like that that is easily gameable i'll just commit all the ethereum reference tests and boom my line commits are just amazing so my concern of, of making it a technical measured number, we just move electioneering to a different um, area. All right, thanks. Nathan? So I have a lot of concerns with the way this is structured. Um, for the identity projects, we have a lot of contributors, but I don't think we have very many premier members, though a lot of the premier, premier, premier members have become involved over time. and. You know, I don't know what this will do to the representation of the technical community itself. I think the elections, although they're imperfect, at least they reflect kind of the general commit level of the code. And, you know, I know we've had a lot of debate and discussion around how you could game the voting system. But for the most part, my understanding was most of that was academic, meaning we actually haven't seen electioneering or, you know, a lot of shenanigans occur at the, at the ground ground level. So, you know, I, I have a lot of concerns about whether this will affect the ability of the technical steering committee to remain neutral and to also kind of act as a counterbalance to the governing board, which already does reflect a lot of the things or a lot of the qualities that are listed in this new proposal. All right. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, Dan, are you still have your hand up or? Okay, thank you. Uh, other comments? Anybody has? All right, I'm gonna add my uh, two cents here. Um, so I, I'm torn. I think there's some good stuff in here. I think there's some uh, things that we'll have to figure out if we go forward with this. Um, one of the things I think we have to figure out is uh, I don't think for number three, we can uh, leave it up to them, right? I think there has to be at least guidelines or something that we put together for uh, how that vote would work and what that might look like. Um, I think that the other thing that is potentially a concern is I know currently, the 
uh, Git contributors that we do not only can includes the projects, but also includes the labs as people who are eligible voters, as well as eligible people to, to bring on to the TSC. Um, and I don't see that piece of the community included in here. Uh, things that I do like, I like the fact that we are attempting to get more of the projects involved. Um, I don't, well, I know we do not have um, people on the TSC today who are part of all of our graduated projects, let alone our incubated projects. Um, so I, I like the fact that we're trying to get more people from all, all of the projects across the board included in this. Uh, I also like the fact that we're trying to get the, the SIGs involved. Um, my initial thought on that was, well, SIGs aren't part of the TSC, but I do think that going back to our breaking down the silos conversation that um, we started with the conversation with the SIG chairs um, is something that is, is quite interesting and intriguing. So I like trying to bring more of the community into these conversations and having uh, representation. Um, but yeah, a couple of, couple of concerns, a couple of things that I like about it. Thanks. And as I said, I'm not married to any of this. Um, I, I mean, I could see, you, you're right, not having labs on here was an oversight. Uh, I could certainly, you know, add something, you know, add a seat for the labs, but uh, there's, uh, I agree. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, Daniela? I, I just don't want to make a, a comment because Arno is not here and he's usually the representative for the TSC on the board, that this was not prompted by any board discussion um, in regards to the uh, seats by the premier members. So just want to make that very clear to everybody. All right, thanks, Daniela. You're welcome. Uh, Hart. So yeah, um, so I guess one comment is I know that the TSC election is one of the like worst possible things to run, and uh, it causes a lot of, a lot of, uh, shall we say, pain and suffering for the LF staff. Um, what I am worried about, and what I think, I uh, I believe it was Troy who brought this up, is that you know right now you're stuck running running one election. How do you know you're not going to get stuck also running the like working group SIGs and labs elections as well, right? Or even the the top level graduated projects, right? How are they going to vote on who gets that seat, right? You know, presumably it's going to have to be some voting process. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, what if each each project decides to do something else, you know, it, it could get really messy. So I'm a little worried that this might actually end up, that, that the way the proposal is stated right now, might end up being more work for the LF staff rather than less. All right, thanks Hart. Dano? So one of the questions brought up earlier is what does the TSE do? What is the technical? And I think one, one observation I think that needs to be made is that the governing board is not a public meeting. While they may release notes, we don't know who's what the back and forth is like, what the tone of the meeting is, versus the TSC where, I mean, recording this and we're putting this on Wikipedia for the basically the world to see. Um, so that might be one subconscious thing that we're driving towards is maybe there's a desire for more open governance and maybe having the TSC be open like this um, could fill that people's need for the field that there's open governance on this. So that's, that's one thought that crossed my mind that I thought was worth surfacing. No real action item on it yet. All right, thanks, Jano. Nathan? Um, I'm fairly confident that this would cause a lot more work for the Linux Foundation staff. Even if we as maintainers ran the elections, the controversy that it's created every time we've had the election would spill over to the Linux Foundation staff to manage, and it would probably have already boiled over by the time it gets to the staff, which would make it a lot more tense situation. It would make 
uh, I think it'll, it would make it a lot more difficult to manage. And to Dano's point, if we're really trying to push towards more open governance, we should open the governance board um, rather than try to change the nature of the TSC to where we lose the TSC. And I would also push on all of us, if we're really not happy with the administrative nature of our agenda, we need to put better things on the agenda. Um, there's nothing that says we can't do more technical architecture work, that we can't work harder towards unifying the platform to be an open source distributed ledger framework like the paragraph above says. I think the, the truth of it is we're probably doing the best things that we can do and clarifying these governance points that is rather tedious is one of the best ways we help support the maintainers and take a substantial load off their plates so that they can make good code progress. So, you know, in, in terms of how we're serving the community, I think a lot of the things that we're dissatisfied with are the things that we have to do in order to, to take the burden off of others. So, you know, overall, I'm not very satisfied with this proposal, though I do like the idea of pushing the SIGs and pushing even the labs to be more represented on the TSC. And I do like the idea of having more seats available on the TSC in general, because I think it will help the, the number of voices that we get to hear. And I think it will help balance some of the election problems we've had where some projects have a lot more votes than others, but there's because they're simply a lot bigger projects. All right, thanks, Nathan. Hart. Hey, yes, thanks. So first of all, to address both uh, Dano's and Nathan's comments, I really agree with Dano that uh, the, the TSC is sort of the open governance arm of the governing board. Uh, my opinion is that if the governing board is the CEO, the TSC has sort of turned into the COO rather than the CTO. Um, and, you know, I would be all for encouraging uh, more open governance from the governing board. And I think a lot of the decisions uh, that potentially probably should have been made by the governing board, a lot of these decisions have been made by the TSC. Um, so, you know, sort of big things like directions of the project um, like, for instance, when Besu joined, while I certainly supported that, I thought that probably should have been like a governing board decision rather than a TSC decision. Um, you know, things like that, like changing the charter. Why is the TSC editing the charter, not the, or the, charter, not the governing board? Um, I, I, well, I would talk a lot more about this if this call were not being recorded, but that's another story. Um, and with respect to Nathan, uh, yes, for the entire history of the TSC, we have tried to um, to push back into doing more technical things, and we seem to have continually failed. So if you have any uh, advice or suggestions on how we can be better about that and find good, meaningful technical work to do, that would be amazing. All right. Thanks, Hart. And thanks for my morning laugh. Um, <laughs> other other comments that people have, we've got some folks on the call who haven't had a chance to speak up yet. Um, feel free to, now is your chance. I can't believe that Gary is silent on an election item. Gary, you have the floor. I was just going to say enough, just because you addressed me, I was just going to say, I, I mean, I think enough's been said. I don't have any, anything, uh, of, of, of any genius comments today. <laughs> and this is Dave. I'll agree with some of the other earlier comments that it seems like this would turn from one problem into many smaller problems. They may not be, um, you know, they might, we might seem, they might seem like, like they're smaller, but they might actually be more work for the, the staff team. All right, thanks, Dave. Other comments people have? All right, so I'm, uh, Raya, I guess I'm gonna leave the feedback with you. Um, you know, 
I am not quite sure where we want to take this. It sounds like there's pieces of this that people like and pieces that uh, a good number of pieces that people don't like. Um, so I think we're probably not in a, in a position to say everybody's 100% happy with this. Uh, sure thing. <laughs> I, 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 my expectation was not to come out of this meeting with uh, a decision or everybody 100% happy with things. I want to have a discussion about how we could make the TSC uh, it's a page title, right? Proposal for reforming the hyperledger TSC. So that's that's why I want to get out of it, this discussion. So thank you all. All right, thanks, Ray. Yeah, and if there's other comments, uh, you know, feel free to to have those in the TSC chat or or with Ray directly. If there's something that you think uh, would be worthwhile to to move forward, Grace. Sorry, just one quick question. Uh, you're probably trying to wrap. No, it's uh, okay. So. Things I think agreed, just want to say that with the spirit of inclusion and adding more projects, also some drawbacks, just echoing everyone else's comments. Um, but does it make sense for the TSC to be voting on how the TSC is going to change? Or should that be a governing board decision? Like Hart was kind of suggesting what what's is this more a board decision? Do we know? It's it's probably a good question. So that is uh, the something that we went through with the expansion and uh, the, the way that happened last time was the TSC asked the governing board to make a change and the governing board made that change, so. So we can make suggestions to the governing board and they can decide what the right steps are. It definitely is part of the charter. So it would have to be something that the governing board would approve uh, or, or just Approve, disapprove. Uh, what's the right word? Uh, decline, maybe. Uh, Hart, you're next. Yeah, Grace, I totally agree with you. Um, this is something that ideally the governing board would be doing, uh, but this kind of thing has been sort of continue over the history of Hyperledger. This thing has sort of been continually pushed down to the TSC. So you get the TSC doing a lot of things that uh, the governing board you would think would do, but um, doesn't end up doing. All right, thanks, Hart. Um, any other comments? We still have a couple minutes before we at the top of the hour. So if there's anything else. Hart, I'm gonna assume your hand is just still raised. I didn't want to say anything else. I'm sorry, I forgot no, to put it that's down. That's fine, that's fine. Uh, all right, so if there's no uh, further comments, I think we can close the meeting. Thank you all for attending and thank you for the, the lively discussion and the input. Thanks, Tracy.